Hey guys, welcome to the second video in my TiVo Tarantula 3D printer series. If you have not seen part 1, go check it out. You can see me unboxing all the parts and taking a closer look at all of them. I got this kit free of charge for purposes of review from Gearbest. If you want to get your own, I will leave links and coupon codes down in the description. In this video I would like to show you how my assembly went, a couple of problems I ran into and how I solved them. And finally I want to show you the first prints I made with this machine. The assembly manual was ok. Parts, amount and the bag you can find them in are nicely listed next to a picture of what the part you are working on should look like. In some steps you needed to improvise a bit. At some point washers were not mentioned, also some steps were skipped. Nothing really too bad, just cosmetics. The order of assembly made sense and I was moving on pretty rapidly. All the needed tools can be found in one of the baggies and absolutely no soldering is required. Although you might want to tin some of the wires if you have a soldering iron available. I found it quite interesting how the guidance in the axis is solved. I am used to linear bearings moving on metal rods. With this printer there are carriages moving in the grooves of the aluminium profiles that make up the frame. They have four wheels two of which can be tightened with a concentric nut and should be adjusted in such a way that there is absolutely no slack in either direction. This is very important, so take your time. X and Y axes are moved by belts. All the pulleys are made from metal, which is pretty impressive. They should hold up a long time. The Z axis is moved by a threaded rod. It is important to notice that only one threaded rod is used, meaning that the other side of the carriage has to be adjusted pretty tightly to minimize slack on the left side. The remaining slack has to be tuned out by adjusting the height of the heated bed, but more on that later. At this point the manual says to connect the electronics as per schematic. Since it was 3 in the morning I decided to postpone the rest of the build to the next day, and that turned out to be a good idea. I discovered a couple of assembly errors on my side. First of all, I mounted the board enclosure the wrong way around. I did not see that the holes were not symmetrical, so I need to unscrew the enclosure and mount it the other way around. Otherwise the stepper motor will not be able to move freely past it. Secondly, the home position of the extruder is on the bottom left of the print bed, meaning that when the print bed is in this position all the end stop switches should be triggered. So as you can see the Y stop switch is on the wrong side and I have to move it to the other side of the print bed. Before starting with the wiring I was interested what the board would do when plugged in. The assembly manual has firmware flashing instructions in the back so I was not sure what to expect. I connect the power cable to the input of the power supply and the 12V output to the board. Here it would have been nice to have a switch in some kind of enclosure, but you can find something nice on Thingiverse that solves that issue. I also connect the LCD module in order to get some visual feedback. The other peripherals are left disconnected since they are not needed for this initial test. Plug it in and yes, the board seems to come pre-flashed. It is showing an error which is to be expected since nothing is connected. But you have quite some options here. Move the axis around, set temperatures and steps of the motors. Time to wire everything up. The kit comes with some black tubing, but it is not very flexible and I decide to go with some spiral tube I have lying around. It is pretty flexible length and width wise, so you can bundle up quite a lot of cables. I start by moving away from the extruder, wrapping all wires and PTFE tubing with the black spiral tubing. I then attach the wire to the Z-axis motor, move down behind the extruder motor, attach the extruder motor and wrap the wire down to the board. I attach the heated bed and wrap its cables and the Y end stop cable. I connect the Y-axis motor and also wrap it in the black spiral tubing. For aesthetics it would have been nicer to have the motor on the other side of the profile, so that the cable can be run more neatly. But in that case one would have to switch the direction of the motor in the firmware. Now it is time to connect all the peripherals to the board. The 
ports are labeled on the PCP and you can also reference the assembly manual. I start by attaching the heated bed and its sensor, followed by the cooling fan. This should always be on, so directly attach it to 12V. Extruder and its sensor. Now all the wires that need to be screwed down are out of the way. I can place the board in its enclosure and move on with connecting the motors and the end stops. Before the initial run I want to make sure that the belts are tensioned. This is easy enough for the y-axis. Simply unscrew the motor assembly and pull it back until the belt is tensioned. Do not over tension it or the acrylic might break. Just make sure that there is as little slack in the belt as possible. This is not so easy for the x-axis, but try to tension it as good as you can. Someone came up with a 3D printable belt tensioner, so this is one of the first things I will print. After all the wires are connected, it is time to give it an initial run and see that everything is moving and heating up. I plug in the printer and instead of an error message we see that it identifies as MIGBOT 3D printer. I set the nozzle to 50 degrees Celsius and the heated bed to 40 degrees. Everything is heating up nicely, so the first tests passed. I move on with checking the movement on all the axes. Everything is looking good so far. The movement on the Z-axis is pretty squeaky. Applying a little bit of grease or oil to the Z-axis thread helps a lot. Ok, time to make the last adjustments before the first print. Move the print bed down by adjusting the screws. Home the printer. Now start adjusting the print bed by moving a piece of paper under the nozzle. Make sure to adjust all four corners in such a way that the piece of paper is just barely able to move between print bed and nozzle. I use slicer and like to set at least three loops of skirt. This usually gives me enough time for final print bed adjustments and also ensures there is enough material in the extruder before starting the actual print. As mentioned earlier, the X belt is hard to tension, so one of the first things I decided to print was a belt tensioner. I will put a link to it down in the description. This is printed at 0.2mm layer height and default print speeds in slicer. I am pretty impressed by the print quality. It is advertised with 0.05mm resolution, so once I have dialed it in I will make some resolution tests. In my opinion for under 200 bucks this is excellent value for money. There are some things that can be improved, but most, like belt tensioner and bigger knobs for print bed adjustment, you can print yourself. The kit is built up in about 5-6 to six hours. That there is no second threaded Z-axis rod is quite a bummer. The left side always seems to hang down just so slightly, but I've seen some low cost modifications solving that issue by adding a second threaded rod and a belt. Nonetheless, the printer is still working perfectly fine this way, once you have leveled your print bed in relation to the nozzle. I would have loved to see some of the acrylic parts, like extruder, set motor and print bed mount made from aluminium. But I can understand that it would be difficult at this price point. All in all, I would recommend this printer to anyone who is willing to spend some time building and tuning his machine. If you are on a budget, this machine might be a good entry point and you can expand it over time, like with a second set rod. Also I have seen a different way of moving the print bed on the y-axis. If you are interested in how I tuned my slicer settings and the machine itself, stay tuned for one of my next videos, where I will go in depth about that. Also stay tuned for my video about printable modifications for your TiVo Tarantula printer. And as always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. 
also like and subscribe, I would really appreciate it.